everyone. Welcome to Chicory's Travels. We are on a live stream and we are late. So we want to start off by apologizing and saying we're sorry. Um, we were, we always get a text message when yeah. we're on a live stream. So first off, sorry about that. We will have to um, learn how to turn that off so it doesn't come on. But um, thank you for joining us. It looks like we're finally live because Kevin from Indiana is saying hello. So hello, Kevin. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for joining us. We tonight are going to talk about apps that we use for RV travel. So if there's any apps that ready use, go ahead and type them in the chat and let us know and we'll compare notes. Um, the reason why we're late is we actually had something really cool planned that we had even tested out and that was we were going to be down at the beach yeah and it worked earlier <laughs> and right when it was time to go for live some reason i messed it up so oh well next time next time we'll try to show you the beach here it's the tampa bay we're here at mcdill air force base and the campground is uh just you know what 100 yards how far yeah. to the beach uh, we were going to do our live out there so you guys could see it, but uh, we'll have to revisit that in a future time. So what we wanted to talk about tonight are the apps that we use when we're traveling. And um, hello to everybody, by the way, who's saying hello. I'm glad you guys joined us through all the Drama. problems <laughs> we had tonight. We promise we'll get this figured out at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we wanted to talk about the apps we use that we find useful when we're traveling. So um, the first one I'll mention is one that costs money, um, but it is called Copilot RV. And it is basically a GPS for your phone. You can download it from the App Store or from the Google Store, whatever that's called. And it is the, um, it's basically an RV G GPS. So you plug in your... Um, size of your RV, height, weight, all that, and it will. Um, like when you plug in your clearance. yeah, when you plug in your dest your destination, it will route you in a way that you won't have to worry about low clearances or anything like that. And the other nice thing about it is that you can program up to fifty uh, stopping points at once. So. You could be on a long trip and you won't have to worry about putting any addresses in your GPS as long as you stay in that order. It will just keep going from one place to the next. Um, so it's very helpful. We've used it quite a bit, actually. Um, our travels to our travels to Texas and back up to the Virginia, Virginia and back down here. Tennessee first. Um, and mm -hmm. it has been reliable. We haven't run into any low clearances. It's taken us on um, not necessarily interstates because I think I put in there to, you know, take us on state highways and stuff, yeah. which tends to be less traffic. And um, it's worked perfect. We haven't had any problems with it so far. So we really like that one as far as GPS goes. We don't have a RV GPS um, and, uh, it's, they're super expensive, you know, the RV yeah, the GPSs. RV GPSs. Although just a side note, if you want an RV GPS, go to technorv.com right after this, because they're having a flash sale today and it's a pretty substantial sale. So that's not like an affiliate or anything. You just go straight to them. We don't need a commission for it. I just saw they sent out an email that they were having a flash sale on an RV GPS. So what's the date today in case anyone's watching the replay? Today's the 17th. It's only going to work if you do it July the 17th. But if you're watching this replay later and you subscribe to Techno RV's newsletter, then you can wait for the next time for it to go on sale if you want to. So that's a little tip. We love Techno RV. They're it's a company that's owned by full-time RVers, and they only sell a handful of products. They're only products that they use themselves. Um, and Kevin Loving says, very convenient for you to program in the bathroom break <laughs> at the beginning for us old geezers. And I would say that in that would interfere with my YouTube watching time. So <laughs> I, uh, I uh, ought to figure out another time to program it. 
<laughs> so that's a really good app. That's um, like I said, we've been using it for a while now on the road and haven't had any issues with it. And it does do updates and everything like that. So I think they keep it pretty current. What's the next one? Okay, so the next app will also have to do with the drive. So that is, um, it's called My Pilot. And it's a joint uh, Flying J pilot app. Because I guess they're owned by the same people. They have like the same color scheme and stuff. Oops, sorry. Um, so it's called My Pilot. Again, uh, this one is a free app. And the neat thing about this one is if you have a signal, it can show you in real time like where the next pilot or Flying J is on your travels. If you're going to be traveling where you don't have a signal, you can look and plan in advance. But I really, we like to use pilots and flying J's because they have, um, they usually have really good um, places to, very large, I guess I should say, gas, you know. Yeah. So we have a big diesel truck, uh, fifth wheel, dually, and then we pull a 44 foot fifth wheel did i say that right we have a dual diesel dually truck, diesel and, we dually truck fifth wheel. and we pull a 44 foot fifth wheel so we actually go and fuel up on the truck side and some people say that, that the truckers don't like that but they've always been super nice and pleasant and talkative and stuff to us as we're all fueling up so i don't know if that's true um there's a whole nother debate about parking in their spaces but just using the fueling line, I think as long as you're courteous and when you're done, if you're going to go in the store, you pull up. I don't think it's a problem because everyone, like I said, has been super nice and, and courteous to us. But if you have a gas RV, that's not really going to be an option. But still, a regular small gas station might not work. So pilots and flying J's often have what they call RV lanes. And those are they're in the front with the regular cars, but they're like a separate like area with a really long approach and a nice big turn coming out of them. And with the app, it's really cool because when you look at the flying J, you click the little, it's got a little eye with a circle for more information and it'll tell you if they have RV fueling lanes. So if you're planning in advance and you want to make sure to, to stop at those. And then the, I prefer um, pilots over flying J's because at Flying J's, you usually have to go inside to pay yeah, before you can why. pump. Yeah. But at the pilots, you can just swipe your card in it and it works. Yeah, because the truck drivers have like so. these special like company cards or whatever that work. And for some reason, which one is it you said? Flying J? Flying J, yeah. Flying J, our regular credit card won't work. I have to go inside and then the credit card will. But I have to tell them an amount, a specific amount. So I, I kind of guesstimate. And try to do it high so I don't have to come back in. And then they say they're going to charge it, but then the money will be refunded. And I, I don't like that process. Yeah. So I prefer to use the pilots. The pilots. Yeah, pilots yeah. you can just pay at the pump. So we try to kind of plan it out. And we even if we haven't planned it out before we leave, if we're like half tank, we'll look on the app and see if when one is coming up. And, and even if we still have plenty of gas, we'll, we might go ahead and stop. Another thing that'll tell you when you hit the little I button is if they what restaurants they have, if they have any restaurants, if they do have any overnight parking for people who want to do overnight parking, if they have showers. I know even some boondockers. I've seen Kyle and Olivia driving and vibing did a video on taking a shower at the truck stop showers. So the app shows you all of that. And there's probably apps for the other ones like Loves is another big truck stop. They might have an app, but I don't know for sure because so far we've only been we've been happy with the pilot. And also the other thing I like about Pilot and Flying J is that the bathrooms are usually very clean. Mm -hmm. So um, as opposed to some other places we've stopped where there I don't men can I don't know if other men are as picky as me, but some men's bathrooms are pretty disgusting. So if you guys use any other apps for gas, let us know. Put it in the oh. comments. Geo Astro RV Journey. Oh, hey. Good to see you guys here. Thank you for joining us. That's uh, John and Brenda who actually travel around and do astronomy presentations out of their big trailer that they have uh, behind their RV. So 
Um, another app that people use and we don't, it's called Gas Buddy, but I just want to throw that out there and let you guys know about it. Uh, the thing with Gas Buddy is it's for you to compare the cost of gas so that you can try to get it someplace cheaper. And we just pay for the convenience. Like we said, we have a reason why we like to use pilots. So we just use them however much they cost. We figure that's our cost to travel. So can't set it here? So, oh, so Sean was saying that he needs, how about that right there? We're, we're doing this ad hoc in our living room for those of you that came late because we were going to try to do it down at the beach that we're parked by and we didn't have a good signal. So we're just trying to work out some logistics. So I will take that and start talking while he's working that out. So the next apps that we're going to use are um, specifically towards planning the trip part. So we use the um, co-pilot app, he said, for navigation. And we use the pilot app, my pilot app for gas. But all the rest of them are either to find campgrounds or to find activities to do. So the first one I'll say is TripAdvisor. And I use the TripAdvisor app all the time. As a matter of fact, I think I'm like a certain level for doing reviews. They give you like different levels if you do reviews. And I think I started using it for RVing because I had already been a, a pretty regular TripAdvisor using for non-RV travel. And so I knew that they had like campgrounds and stuff on there. And you can not only find campgrounds, but you can find fun things to do. So I figured, you know, why not keep using it? It was working for me. And also because it has a feature in there where you can ask reviewers questions. And I have mostly gotten responses every time I've asked a question. Like when you're reading RV campground reviews, you kind of have to read between the lines because what's a problem for one person might not be a problem for me. What's a problem for me might not be a problem for someone else. Like for example, if they're not big rig friendly, that's going to be a problem for me. But for someone with a smaller camper, you know, it might not be an issue. So I might have a question like what they meant by something and I'll send them a comment. And I have oftentimes received response and Sean actually just used TripAdvisor too. Yeah, I used it when we were in Tennessee. I found a the military museum using TripAdvisor. It was on the top things to do. And then also found out that there was a cool tour at Oak Ridge National Labs. So we actually took a day and went over and did this tour, which was really very interesting about um, the development of the bombs that were dropped um, in Japan. And, in World War II. And the development of... Um, nuclear power in general for submarines and ships and things like that. So yeah, I found that on TripAdvisor as well. And it was, you know, they rank them. So they were in the top 10 things to do and they look yeah. interesting. And it was totally cool because it was something that we absolutely had no idea about. I've heard of the Manhattan Project and I've heard of Los Alamos, but I had never heard of Oak Ridge Laboratory. So, and, and it actually, they enriched the uranium for the little boy bomb yeah there and so, i think yeah. uh, john jedlow would have liked that museum as well oh yeah he's yeah. a science lover too so yeah um so we got a few comments you want to i didn't bring my glasses so let's see where we are um ron s hi from naples cool i have an uncle that lives down there um life of ken and jane he said jane uses gas buddy um for her for finding gas, but they're having bad data, so they're probably gonna mm. drop off. Um, and DNS Adventure says we actually look at all stays and they list some truck stops as well as, they, they list some tr truck stops, so they just take a glance at that before they go. And Geo Astro RV says they love RV Trip Wizard. Oh, so that's good. There are actually some YouTube videos about RV Trip Wizard, and I've thought about getting it, but just haven't ever gotten around to it because what I'm using right now works for me, but definitely always looking to learn new things in the future. And uh, it was a good point that um, DNS Adventures brought up about all stays. That all stay. Is there an S on the end? Is it all stays? It's all stays. Uh, all stays. Okay. I do have that app. I actually don't use it though, just because 
we have always stayed in campgrounds so far. So the two apps that I use, one is TripAdvisor and another one is RV Park Reviews. And those two so far have fulfilled all my needs for just finding campgrounds. But the great thing about all stays, the reason why I got it is we did plan on doing, you know, some other type of, of camping and boondocking or mooch docking. And all stays has more of those options. Like they said, truck stops. It also has like some small like municipal parks and you can get a version that has military campgrounds. Um, but so we might, I have the app and we might use it in the future. But right now, in addition to TripAdvisor, I use RV Park Reviews. And same reason as TripAdvisor is because I've found that it has a lot of good reviews. Um, the app, and when I say good reviews, I mean reviews of the campgrounds. And that's what I'm looking for. I want people to tell me things like, a lot of low overhanging trees or the roads are too tight and hard to navigate with a big rig or there's a lot of potholes. They don't have to tell me the Wi-Fi doesn't work. We already know it doesn't yeah. work in any campground, even though they say it does. Um, but I did notice when I was reviewing for this live that RV Park Reviews, the app, actually has some pretty poor reviews itself in iTunes, and I was surprised because I like the app, but um, some of the user reviews for the app are that it's too slow. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's like when you're driving down the road and it's not responsive enough. I am a planner like we've talked about before, so I am not looking for campgrounds while we're driving. I've already made all my reservations now, what, through February? Yeah. And it's July, so um, it doesn't really matter to me if it's a little slow, I guess, is is what I'm saying. But I do like the reviews because I want to hear from real people um, how the campground is and, and if it measures up. Going back to TripAdvisor, I do want to add one thing. I use that first over the RV Park reviews because in TripAdvisor, they have the management photos and that's what they call them, management photos. And those are really the marketing photos, right? from whenever the campground was first opened, however long ago that may be. But they also have reviewer photos. So people who visit a place take pictures and they upload it of what the place actually looks like. So I will always go to TripAdvisor first. And if I can't find um, something in the area that, that sounds good to me from TripAdvisor, then that's when I'll go to RV Park Reviews. But again, let me just add, anytime you're reading reviews, you got to read between the lines. And I would say take it with a grain of salt because when do people most often want to write a review? When they're unhappy. Exactly. So, and, and you can't make everyone happy. So I try to read if they're unhappy, what is it they're unhappy about? Um, because if they're unhappy because there's a lot of rules, it doesn't bother me. We were in the military for 20 years. We're used to rules, so I'll go to a place with five pages of rules. I don't care. If, the, if it says, you know, they're, they make you mow your own grass, then I'm, I'm going to look at the price and say, <laughs> the only reason why I would say, normally I would say, no, we wouldn't go. But here at McDill, you have to edge around your site if you're here longer than two weeks. So the price is right. Here. Yeah, yeah. So working to relax as they're planning their trip to Arkansas, and they've used Campendium and Rand McNally to plan their campgrounds and fuel budgeting. So, oh, awesome. I've heard so, good things about both of those. I have heard about Campendium. I didn't know that there was a Rand McNally app. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, they advertise it in the Escapers magazine. Uh, I think, I like think the RV Trip everything. Wizard that um, Geo Astro RV mentioned, I think that might be one of the ones that you can like calculate your estimated fuel costs even by going mileage. Does Ray McNally, is that what you're saying? I Does think that that's what he's saying. I'm not huh? sure if it does or not. Okay, cool. Cool. So um, let's see, what other apps do I use? Okay, we like KOAs. We actually did a review. If you haven't seen it, um, after this, go check out our last video. It's a review of the Crossville KOA in Crossville, Tennessee. And so since we like to stay at KOAs, not every time, but we mix them in there. 
um, we're a member of their rewards program. And so I have the KOA app and that lets me track my rewards points. And it also lets me see like my upcoming reservations so that I can make sure, you know, you hear horror stories about people having called some place, not a KOA, just any place and making a reservation and then showing up and there not being a reservation. So a lot of times people will say in response to that, we'll email and get an email confirmation. Um, and so that's one of the things I like about the KOA app. I can look at it and make sure that I have a reservation. Because an example of a non-RV travel, we had Hilton hotel reservations for our sons, for our oldest son's wedding in Virginia. Two of our sons were flying from uh, Texas to it. And in the Hilton app, it's the same as the KOA app. I can see upcoming reservations. And how many days before they arrived? Just a couple. I thought I had made reservations. I could have swore I made reservations. And two days before, I look on the app and it says no upcoming reservations. And, and then I started panicking. So I like being able to look at that periodically and saying, yep, my reservation's still in there. We're still good. And then also it will show you a map where you can look for KOAs and you can also search by like city and state and it'll show you KOAs. Um, so Kevin Loving said he read an article today. The reason they are not building new campgrounds is because all of the land beside the railroad tracks has been bought up. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It is funny because he's not kidding. A lot of campgrounds do tend to be near railroad tracks for some reason. Yeah. It seems like that. It? And two for RV says my pilot, Mountain Directory, all stays. They find those very helpful. I haven't heard of Mountain oh, Directory. You need to take a note of that, though, okay. because we haven't done too much mountain driving. But I had heard about, like, these books, not an app, but books that had to do with mountain, you know, where it tells you, like, the grades and things like that. And uh, that would be good, good planning to know ahead of time. For when we do, won't be this year though. Yeah. Because we're going across Texas pretty much all flat, yeah. mostly. Yeah. And Kevin Loving also uh, said our review was great. So thanks oh, very awesome. much. Oh, awesome. Yeah. 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 We like to try to throw in a little bit of the local area when we do campground reviews. And I think everything in the local area that we reviewed, except for the homestead, we found on TripAdvisor. So. Why are you smiling? Is there another comment? No. Okay. I, um, what's that, all the apps that you use? No, but you can. No, go ahead. About. Okay. So, um, another app that I use, um, is recreation.gov. Oh, yeah. That's um, and Reserve America. Both of those are for, um, government campgrounds. So, like, recreation.gov camp, is that what it says? That's the one that has a lot of your core engineer campgrounds. So I haven't used it a lot yet, except for to look, um, because we're actually getting ready to stay in our first core of engineer campground in September. So that'll be our first one. So I've only used it once, but it went really well. Um, and then the other one, Reserve America, that's the one Florida State Parks uses, and a lot of the national um, camp, a lot of the national park campground also use Reserve America. And one thing I really like about that Reserve America, I know a lot of people say they don't like it, but one thing I really like about that system is if the campground is booked for when you want to go, you can click next availability and it'll show you when it's open. So if you have flexible plans, that's a really good feature. Uh, Radio Kevin Silence Loving TV. said... Sean, you need to make a new app. Where in the West is Bob Wells? <laughs> it probably would because you know who Bob Wells is, right? No. He's that. Um, he's like the guru on cheap camping. Oh, okay. Like Van Dweller. Oh, you know, okay. like I mean, he's got a lot of groupies. So if people could track him down, I'm sure I they would pay for, for that. that one. Yeah. So one last app that I use is a discount app, and it's Groupon. And I use Groupon a lot to find um, 
coupons for places to go and also restaurants to eat at. So, because we're always looking for ways to save a buck. So, Groupon's really good because you can go in there and change your city. So, like, in February, we were in Chicago, not in the RV. Sean had to go for work, so I went with him. And he went to work, and I went to play. So, I went on Groupon, and I actually found a really good deal on one of those city passes. So, city passes are usually a really good deal for big cities where they have like all these, um, you know, different tours. Like I think with the city pass there, you got like the double decker tour bus, the, the, um, what's it called now? It's, it's not the Sears tower anymore. It's a different name because a different company owns the most floors, but it's that one in Chicago where you can go up super high and get a good view and go out on a ledge. Um, and it had, um, the art museum and, just a lot of different attractions and they group them together in a city pass, which boasts that it's 33% off if you were to buy all of those things individually. Well, with Groupon, I got like another 15% on top of that. So it was a really good deal. And I also got a Groupon for a pizza place, uh, Giordano's, I think it's called. So it was deep dish Chicago style pizza, which I had never had before. So Sean went to work and I had an awesome day touring Chicago and having deep dish pizza and got a really good deal on it. So I found Groupon to be, and even though it's called Groupon, so you would think like it's only for groups. I was by myself. It worked out well. And then I want you to tell them about the one app that our son put us on to where um, probably more for when you're parked somewhere and are running around a town versus on the highway, but um, we actually get cash back for Oh, uh, yeah, fuel. yeah. What's the name of that? Okay, so it's not in every city yet, but it's called Get Upside. And we use the app, and you can get up to, it says, 25 cents on gas. So right now I'm looking at it. For my local area, it shows four different gas stations. It shows you how much it is a gallon, although they're showing me regular. I wonder if there's a way to change the settings for diesel. And then it tells me how much back. So like one is two sixty five a gallon and you get seven cents cash back per gallon. Or you can go to another one that's two seventy five a gallon, but you get ten cents cash back. So it's would be a three cent difference. So the other one would still be cheaper, right? Yeah. Yeah, so the other one's still cheaper. So the cool thing about that, though, and app, apps like that, um, the shopping type apps, is that so you start earning money back. So from one fueling, we got $8.35 back because yeah. it was our first one. And the first one, you get a big boost. Um, and then he also, because we used his referral code, he also got a boost on it. So... I could probably come up with a referral code and put it in my comment here, and then you could use that, and then I could get a boost from you. Um, we'll definitely or, put a link to the app, the, the app name. Yeah, the app the name for sure. I don't, I don't have like a link for it to be like to me, but we'll send you the link for it. But there are other like shopping style apps, not only for gas, but like Ibotta. It's called. I'll, I'll put it in the description. It's like I O B A T T A that I've read about, haven't actually used myself, that um, like you scan your receipt or something like when you go grocery shopping and you can like earn rewards like that. So definitely if you guys have any experience with these style of apps, they are really good because you're earning money back. And I think they're banking on people just never cashing out. Yeah. Maybe. And so, but there is one last app that we should talk about. Actually, two. Okay. Kevin brought up one. All right, we'll do uh, Kevin's He first. asked, um, are you still geocaching? Oh, I'm so glad you asked that. I am still geocaching. It's my goal now to get one every state. So you know how some people have these state sticker maps that they put on the outside of their RV? We don't have one of those. But um, I do, I've instead set a goal to get a geocache in every state. And I got this wood map that I'm going to hang on the wall and put little push pins in for every city or, you know, area, national forest, whatever, wherever I end up getting a, a geocache at and track it 
that way. So yeah, there's an app, free app called geocaching. And it is really good because it helps you find the geocaches. So it's really neat because you look in a local area and then like right now I can't see any because I'm on base and they don't usually let you have geocaches on base because then people will oh, try to grab the base to get the geo because people are crazy. Um, they might try to get that geocache, but um, it'll show you where the geocaches are. And when we were just in Northern Virginia, I showed my, our oldest son the geocache app and we went to this one, it's like a five mile, more of a nature walk than a hike around a lake. And there were probably 30 different geocaches. So we did like three and then that was enough. And then one final app um, is one that we use. We're sort of um, frugal and financially responsible now. Yeah, now. Uh, just in the last couple of years. We weren't always. So we have a budget and um, we put the budget in an app called Every Dollar which is free yep. and um, you can buy a paid version that links to your bank account, but you don't really need to. Yeah. And um, we keep track of all of our spending for the month on this every dollar app to make sure that we don't go over what we've budgeted in a particular category. So like we have a budget for gas and um, we know when we're getting close to that budget, we need to stay in the RV for a couple yeah. days or slow down. Stop driving. Take some what public we're doing, transportation. Yeah, or walk, walk, ride a bike or something like that. So yeah. that app really helps us stay on top of, um, really helps us stay on top of what we're, what we're spending. So it's free and um, it really helps you notice your spending throughout the month instead of just waiting till the end of the month to reconcile your account. And I want to say hi to Joe. Um, oh, too far V. They use Wallet, which is a similar oh, app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, all these budgeting apps are so great, and they really help keep you on track. And I think, like people talk about saving money, the I, and we have an article on our website, chickeriestravels.com, called Seven Ways to Save Money on Full Time Travel. And I would say, hands down, the number one way on of those seven, one of them is to track your spending that hands down to set an allowance in advance. So a budget and then to track it as you go. Not, we used to maybe reconcile after the fact. Yeah. It's not as helpful. That helps us save money. Cause we'll, I have entertainment. I have restaurants. I mean, every single thing that I have a thing called fun money. We each have 50 bucks in fun money. That's where I, my Starbucks is fun money. And I see I'm getting close. Better slow down. Can't go to Starbucks every day. And hi to uh, Joe and Nancy. They're in Apollo, Pennsylvania. Hey, thanks for joining us. Um, so we talked about more apps than we planned Plan on. to, yeah. Because I was looking at my phone. I have even more, but those are the, the big ones. And we'll list them all in the description. Yeah. Or at least most of the ones that we can remember. And um, we're going to do a follow up blog post that'll probably go out on Monday, is usually when our blog post. And I'll add some of the other ones that were recommended by you. Yeah, and I want to thank everybody for chiming in on, on what apps they use. Um, actually, a couple of them seem interesting to me. So yeah. we'll, uh, we'll definitely check them out. Um, if we haven't used them already, we'll download them and try them out. Um, Kevin Loving says the best way to save money is to camp 50 miles from the nearest town. <laughs> well, that, that probably works too. <laughs> and Joe, Joe and Nancy said they will see us at Nomad Fest 2018. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. And I'm so glad that they mentioned that because I did want to let you guys know we're getting ready to share on our Facebook page. Uh, something really exciting. The producers of Nomad Fest are, it's called ENTV, Epic Nomad TV. And they just released like the first two minutes of the film. So the lead in, you don't see us in it yet. Yeah. It's just the first two minutes. It's like this big epic scene. And it kind of like lays the, the groundwork for what the movie is about. And we're going to share that on the Facebook page so that you guys can all see it. And there's also a link in there to a crowdfunding campaign 
that um, is ongoing as well. So you can see the first two minutes. And if you're interested in helping to fund the, the movie and the Epic Nomad um, organization, uh, take a look at that. There's a lot of information about it that explains what it's going to be used for and everything. So we definitely like you guys to take a look at that. And the reason why we were late in getting everything together is we were on the phone with one of the crew members and they were telling us how hard they're working right now oh, yeah. um, on trying to get this uh, film, uh, trying to get this film completed. It edited really, yeah, because they've done all the filming now, but I mean, now they've got a lot of footage to go through and to put it together into the amazing product that we know it's going to be at Nomad Fest. And we're definitely looking forward to uh, seeing those of you that are going to be at Nomad Fest. And if you're not going to be at Nomad Fest, that link that I'm going to put up there also talks about how you can live stream the film as well when it comes out. And then uh, Joe Allen said, sorry, you came in late. Do you use Zomato or Zomato? Or rest stops. We have not used either one of those, so no. we'll have to check them out. Yeah, we'll have to check them out. Let you know. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for the recommendation. Yep. And we're over our thirty-minute time frame that we set aside for this uh, because our internet usually starts <laughs> yeah. acting funny at about it thirty minutes. Like thirty for some reason. Did you spend your Starbucks money on the crowdfunding, Julie? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have to go into my budget. I'm gonna have to take my fun money and make that my donation now. You're right, because that's more important than Starbucks. It's a movement. So <laughs> thanks for reminding me. I have some cash. <laughs> um, and uh, also want to just say thanks again for joining us. And if you have anything else to add, you can continue to add to the, it won't be the live chat anymore, but you can continue to add to the comments of this video that'll still be up for replay. You can go over to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Chickory's Travels, and leave a comment there. Or you can always contact us via our webpage. We have a contact us form. And we love to hear from you guys. And um, if you would, please hit that thumbs up button on your way out. And uh, I promise, I know I say this every, every, oh, so we got a couple of questions real quick. Okay. Um, what vehicle and RV insurance do you use? We use USAA for our auto and USAA doesn't have RV insurance, but they partner with Progressive. So we use Progressive for our RV insurance and they, um, we use the USAA app. Mm -hmm, and um, and it, we're registered in the state of Florida. That's where our domicile is. So they're a little high on insurance, yeah. we found, but, you know, it is what it is. And, um, yeah, we're happy with both of them. We're happy with USAA and then their progressive partner for our insurance. Yeah. What was the other question? That was it. Oh, that was it. Okay. Um, and so I, I know I say this every week, but I promise next week, it will be smoother. smoother. <laughs> um, Maybe we'll get to show you the beach. Yeah. If we and, can work um, it out. I had some fancy graphic stuff that I was going to do. I know. And he, was, he, he did such a good job. I worked on it for like three hours today. But um, Fizzled out. Next week. Next week. We're going to be fancy. So thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it. And uh, safe travels. <laughs>